Alright, Bon Dias. Buenos Dias, mi amigos. Okay. Alright, so real quickly, I'm going to go over a couple of comments here. I just want to touch up on them. And then I want to do a, a review of this video. Okay, but real quickly, I want to cover a couple of these comments here. From uh, one from uh, True Biblical Creation 3343 says, Amen, brother. Sometimes we have to be a bit stern and rough around the edges. It's all about the passion for God's truth. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 6, But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. All right, thank you for that. Did I say that word right? Thoroughly? Thoroughly? Oh, goodness sakes. Am I saying that word right? All right, so yeah, it's the same thing. Okay. All right, who cares? All right, thanks for that, though. Uh, that's, you know, that's a great point. Uh, we do have to be, you know, wise as serpents and harmless as doves and... Uh, you know we're in a battle <laughs> and yeah, our enemy has no limits and so we got to be strong we got to be tough and you know sometimes I I probably you know get too tough but uh, I'll try to do better and then um, Bab is Babinos 8075 says thanks a lot it seems you are right I have to search more about the on authenticity of the book of Enoch to be certain yeah all right so in order to all right so I don't know where I'm going with this video I'll try to make this short okay so and another point about the book of Enoch all right we see that Enoch was born before the flood and he was taken away before the flood. All right. So, if we go to uh, Hebrews 11, verse 5, by faith. Wait, yeah, that's this is it. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was n not found, because God had translated him. But before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. And that is the simple truth that Enoch went from life to death without suffering the pain of death. All right, that's what this means. He was not taken to heaven before Jesus Christ. He is not up in heaven now. No man has ascended to heaven, not even David. I'll get into that if you, if you need me to. But... Um, nobody is resurrected into heaven. It hasn't happened yet. Only Jesus has done that. All right. So it's important to understand exactly when Enoch was on earth, when he was alive on earth and when he, uh, when his life was ended. Okay. So this is all before the flood. Now the flood comes. And there are only eight people saved. And then the population rebuilt itself. And then the whole world was of one language and one speech. And God said there is nothing stopping them from doing whatever they imagine to do. So let us go down and confound their language. And don't take this lightly. All right. Do not poo-poo the word of God. Right there, when God confounded the language, the language that was before, the original language, could no longer be understood after God confounded the language. Therefore, whatever writings... Enoch wrote they were useless alright 
and even if he had a recorder and he recorded his voice saying something, nobody would be able to understand what he said or what he wrote, any of it, after God confounded the language. Now, you can't get around that. All right, anybody that says that Enoch had a book and that it was translated from language to language, they're not being honest. And I can't go along with it. Because that would mean that God confounded the language in vain. And essentially God lied about confounding the language. I can't go along with that. Cannot do. I can't. All right. There was one language, the original language, and then God confounded the language, and that original language can no longer be understood. Now, I have to do this. Let's say the original language is uh, English. All right. And then God confounds the language. Now, he adds... Now... It, he add, let's say that the confounding of the language caused you to speak Chinese. All right, so if God confounded the language, but everybody still understood the original language, everybody would ignore the extra language. God did not add languages to the original language. God done away with that original language. So let's say you, me and you, or let's say me, I speak, uh, you know, uh, English and Chinese, and you speak English and Japanese, or whatever. Well, we're not going to talk to each other in these languages that we don't know how to communicate with one another. We're going to go back to the original language, English, and talk to each other in English. And therefore, these extra languages have no use. Everybody would just ignore the extra languages and be like, God, what are you doing? I don't care about those other languages. No, God eliminated the original language. And that original language is what is the only language that Enoch knew. All right, and so there cannot be a book of Enoch. It's impossible. All right, so let's go back and cover what we read in Jude. And in Jude, you notice here, it says, it doesn't say Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, wrote of these saying. No, it says he prophesied. It means this he taught these this is what he taught so the idea is being shared with us in the book of Jude if it if this said Enoch wrote then this would contradict the entire Bible you'd have to throw out the entire Bible it one error and the Bible whole Bible's wrong it's no good it's not from God all right, so, and, you know, we could go on uh, this subject for quite a while, really. Um, Jesus himself says the scripture cannot be broken, and you know about the prophecy of a bone of him shall not be broken. All right, so <clears throat> the, there cannot be a contradiction in the Bible. All right, and I think there was some comment here about uh, here, let me continue to read this and I'll go back actually what made me believe was historical reports from different times and different places about these beings right so you're listening to man and instead of God an explanation could be that those forms could be fallen angels deceiving uh, UFO aliens fallen angels whatever you want to call them uh, now I'm gonna take again I want to remind you I'm gonna take um, hard exception to the idea that fallen angels are sons of God okay I think that's mocking God and uh, it, it, you've, you've been fooled man you've been tricked like I said the other day it, it's harder 
or it's easier to deceive somebody than it is to convince them that they've been deceived. It really is. Okay, it isn't the first time, but there were so many mentions of huge bones. Now, I, I'm all on board with the idea that there were 10 feet tall people living in the past. 10, 12 feet tall, maybe even 14, I don't know. 14 seems a bit excessive, but um, if you want to say they're 12 feet tall people, okay. Uh, 10 feet tall, I mean, you think about how ridiculously tall 10 feet would be. Alright. 8 foot tall is ridiculously tall. 9 feet is out of this world. Okay. I will review my beliefs and search more. There you go. There you go. Just trust the Word of God. Put the Word of God above what anybody else says. The books of Enoch cannot be inspired. They cannot be from Enoch. They're a fraud. They are a fraud. They cannot... Enoch could not have possibly written a book that could be understood. Could not be translated into any language any time after God confounded the language. The moment God confounded the language, if he had a book, it, it's worthless. Alright? Not possible. Well, you know, they weren't in the Bible. Okay. Now, here's the problem, okay? So, I mean, there's no way to really say that they had a first century Bible. Because you got to consider there was the Old Testament and then there were numerous books written by a variety of people. And so it would have took time to gather all those books into one book with the Old Testament and the New Testament. And maybe they did accomplish that in the first century, but uh, then the problem is, uh, you know, um, what language would that have been in? All right, so the Greek Empire, which was um, the Greek language, it was the predominant language. The Greek Empire was no longer in power. It was the Roman Empire. And we could get into that too. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on one language, or I'm sorry, on one idea here. But you know, I think it took time to put all the books together and then to uh, get those translated into uh, other languages so that the whole world could read the Bible and so there was no standard Bible in my opinion uh, until they gathered all the books into one language and I think there was uh, problems accomplishing that uh, you know you figure John was on the island of Patmos right so if he was the last one to write a book it would have took time to take his book and to put it into uh, to fit it in with the other books into the New Testament okay it would in my opinion in my mind you know I don't know but I think it would have took time and uh, so the world was going through major changes and uh, you know I, I really think that uh, there, I don't know how to say this I, I don't know that there was a gold standard for a very long time where everybody could say this book is the gold standard for the world. I think they had manuscripts in uh, 
different languages and it took time to put them all together and to translate them into one language that's what I think anyway any who cares all right if I okay and so this idea that you know the book of Enoch was in the Bible in the first century well if if you know, let's ignore what I said about the confounding of the language okay just for a moment if because Enoch was before the flood so why wasn't the book of Enoch in the Old Testament it never was just because somebody thought hey we got this book let's put it in our Bible doesn't mean it belongs in the Bible all right and found an African Bible in the 20th century if I remember correctly they were found in an African Bible and you know and you know they, they say they found uh, the book of Enoch in the Dead Sea Scrolls and I'll continue to say this the word dead should be a clue to you don't touch it all right the book of Jubilees okay so we got all kinds of problems with the book of Enoch and even with the book of Jubilees I don't want to get into all that and Genesis 6 4 does not at all I mean Genesis 6 4 obviously overwhelmingly identifies sons of God with men overwhelmingly I don't know how it makes no reference whatsoever at all to the idea that sons of God are angels none whatsoever and it's overwhelmingly and implies that it's men and it came to pass when men began to multiply that the sons of God my spirit shall not always strive with man I mean this is overwhelming overwhelming sons of God came in under the daughters men and they bear them children which became mighty men men of renown so what's the sons of God men and God saw that the wickedness of man and you can't get around this this is over Whelming, and repented the Lord that he had made man I mean it is hammered home verse after verse it's talking about man and the Lord said I will destroy man I mean <laughs> it's overwhelming it's talking about man there's no difference no difference between sons of God and men it's the same thing man in men I mean if you want to differentiate sons of God and man you got it then you could differentiate men and man and you could go I mean people will do stuff like that unable to connect the dots so they try to make each word separate and then come up with their own goofy doctrine I'm telling you that's you know you're not being honest when you do stuff like that because yes the Bible is written to be understood in every language that's right the Word of God transcends all languages for all time forever and ever and then on the day that we are resurrected we are will be given a, a new language a pure language and all the languages spoken of today are going to be done away with forever okay but looking after the meaning of words maybe more than one in the original language is there is no rich you can't possibly look up the original language because just like I showed you in Genesis 11 the original language was done away with there is no original language none does not exist this is again is a case of you have to believe what the Bible says I mean if you care about the truth I, yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, you don't think people are lying to you? They are. The whole world's lying to you. Why? The whole world's been lying to you since you were a baby. Why are you still clinging on to what the world says? Really? Paul himself says that whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Well, I just showed you an example of that in Genesis 11 that original language does not exist 
and then of course um, you want to get to the actual original writings well Moses broke the originals <laughs> and there just no matter how you look at this there is no original language there is no original scripture the Word of God transcends all languages for all time forever and ever think about what Jesus says it is the spirit that quickens the flesh profited nothing the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life the Word of God endures forever and ever and ever the languages come and go but the Word of God endures forever now if you want to understand let's go let's see you know, let's use an example here here here's the word flesh what's what's the original meaning of this well if you have any trouble understanding a word that you read for example let's do something a little more um, challenging if you will oh, for me languishing is a good one right seems like there was another one that I wanted to uh, look at maybe that was the one integrity that's a good word what does integrity mean what does languishing mean maybe languishing would be the best example here All right, so we look up the word languishing what's this mean languishing failing to make progress or be successful the Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing did I say that word right languishing I can't even see if I can't say words languishing languishing if I can't say words then I need to learn English better now think about the, you, you you don't know you're not an expert on the English English language neither am I okay I can barely speak it right so why would you go and translate this into you know Chinese and you gonna understand languishing better in Chinese than you would in English man I'm telling you for me English is the only language I know I barely know it but I, that's the only one I know why would I go then to a foreign language which I have absolutely no clue of to try to learn what this word means it's insanity that but that's what people do and I'll tell you why they do it it's because this way they can take an English word translate it into a foreign word all right and then retranslate it back into the English with all the available variables of that word in other words you can take the word dog translate it into a foreign language and then translate it back into English and change the word dog into a cat that's why so they can change the Word of God so they can change the words to fit their doctrine they change the Word of God that's what they do now you think about this uh, in 2nd Corinthians 2 verse 17 for we are not as many which corrupt the Word of God we are not as many which corrupt the Word of God you need evidence of this just take a look at this all right let's go ESV for we are not like so many peddlers of the Word of God you see that they changed the meaning of the verse that warns us against people changing the Word of God a person who sells illegal drugs we are not as many we are not like so many drug dealers of words of good you know come on man I mean this is not just the ESV <clears throat> and we're gonna get this 
you know, you take a look at all the popular NASB, all right, very popular version. NIV. Unlike so many, we do not pedal. They don't sell the Word of God. Yep, that's what exactly they do. They sell the Word. They sell their Bibles. Okay, they they have to conform to the copyright laws, so they have to make a certain amount of changes in order to get that copyright, so they can sell their Bible version and make the money. And what do they do? They they take out this verse, which so plainly states that people are corrupting the Word of God. This is not a new thing. All right, this is not a 21st century thing. This has been going on for a very long time. In fact, we could go all the way back to Genesis 3, when the serpent beguiled Eve and got her to doubt the Word of God. All right, so that, it's exactly the same thing. It really is. And the serpent says to the woman, Yea, has God said? Question mark. Getting Eve to doubt the word of God. Okay, so where was I here? Alright, so there is no original language. It, I mean, if you don't know English, why, why would you? I mean, you don't especially know what? What are you going to look at? Hebrew? Greek? Chinese? Japanese, Portuguese, what? You don't know any of those languages. And you barely know English. So how about if you want to know what a word means in English, how about looking up the definition for that word in English? Come on, man. There's no reason whatsoever to take an English word and go to a foreign language. To learn what it means okay even if you read it, another translation you will see the word Nephilim yeah well yeah that's because all modern translations of the Bible in the English language are perversions they're all corrupt every single one of them and I'm gonna tell you there's only one Bible in English and that's the King James Bible it's perfect all the way through every modern version in the English language is corrupt and the reason they corrupt it is because they want to conform to copyright laws so they can sell their Bible and make the money remember what the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil you don't think they're corrupting the Word of God you don't think they aren't after the money come on And it, all right, so th I mean, it took me a look. I this is again. I have to be reminded. There was a time when I didn't know this either, and I assumed that there was a gold standard in another language. I assumed it because somebody told me that. I assumed well, you got to go back to the original. Well, one day I thought, well, what the heck? I'll just go and find. You know, we got the internet. I'll go find the original and I'll I'll start to study the original, and then I. I found out there is no original. I was lied to. Eh, I mean, that's hard to take, man. I, it, it angers me when when I get lied to. It, I mean, I've been lied to. I've I've fallen for just about every trick in the book. Time, and time again. Been gullible. I've been taken as a fool. Time, and time again. And it burns me. And, you know, I got burned. All right, but I'm just glad that I finally come to the realization that there is no original. And the fact of the matter is the Word of God transcends all languages for all time. Like Jesus says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. It's not words written down on paper that is God. It is the Spirit that is God. The Spirit that is from above that is God. And there is no language, no piece of paper that can re restrain the Word of God. Alright. Let's see, John. It seems kind of off unless it talks about race. Still, it seems kind of off. Unless also, in the resurrection, we will be like the angels in heaven. 
not just the angels and also emphasizes in emphasizes on sex and marriage however your points are fair and I will consider them have a good night well thank you for that and uh, that's all I can I can't change your mind but I can show you the truth and and um, and trust God you know if you're following the Spirit of God you follow the truth you're gonna have your eyes open to the truth if you put the truth above your own self and seek the truth you shall find it and that's something that Jesus promises us and it's true and I can testify to it question have you read or heard stories about people being raped by spirits in their dreams I also remember a new age practice to summon a succubus see this is so I'm gonna take this word and I'm gonna go uh, see what the meaning of it is in um, you know uh, Chinese and then I'm gonna you know it'll take me about 70 years to learn what Chinese it probably take me longer than I'm pretty dumb so let's just try to figure out what this word means in English a female demon believed to have sexual intercourse with sleeping men uh, so this is fairy tale nonsense okay you have no idea what kind of perversion exists in the world well uh, you know uh, maybe I don't but I don't want to know all right so like the other like last week or whatever it was I heard about some professor at Penn State University took his dog out to the park and in front of cameras had sex with it and said that he was just letting out his frustration or bl blowing off steam I believe is the quote uh, wh what in the world's going on man um, yeah so I don't want to know about that stuff I really don't I don't I mean uh, I got some opinions the world is just so full of corruption it's not worth knowing all the corruption of the world I don't care about the corruption I don't care what's evil in the world I just want the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ and of the Word of God just give me the truth you know all this perversion wickedness in the world I don't care about it's too much and it does me no good I also have heard stories of demons all right so I you notice one thing I just wanna just gonna point this out the word demon is not in the Bible anywhere at all it's not in the Bible Isn't that interesting uh, the word is devils okay and just like angels devils are spirits all right all right they're spirits absent of God all right and how many times a lot of just the word devils <clears throat> with an s is mentioned numerous times isn't, it? isn't that interesting okay who cares all right so go back here uh, the word trying to sexually molest women again I don't care about all that stuff I don't know if you want I don't want to I'd rather spend my time researching what the Bible says all right so I mean devils is one way to search the Bible we can do this I mean if you want to get nasty and look at nasty words you can do this and see how many times the word lust is mentioned you want to get silly you can look up this word here too okay I used to get in trouble if I said that word but that word is in the Bible okay so I mean if you want to get goofy and silly and stuff like that uh, the important thing is when you are uh, doing word searches like that like this I think in my opinion it's really important to make sure you know the context of each time this word is mentioned if you're doing a serious word search okay right, so I think I thank you for the, um, these comments I appreciate them so real quickly I want to get into uh, your revelation 20 and I'm just gonna show you about a minute maybe a minute 10 seconds or whatever of this guy right here Hey, good morning. A leaf. A leaf is a promise of the resurrection. It's a symbol, a picture of life again when things seemingly look dead. And uh, this is the. So that's yeah, that's a good point uh, because every spring, the leaves reappear. They're, they're, 
you know, it's uh, evidence that uh, though it, they looked to be dead, you know, a few months before, they came back to life, and so also will we come back to life at the end of the world. Power that broke Satan's grip on mankind. Charles Hall said that death is no longer a prison because of the resurrection. It's now an entrance into the presence yeah, of... Yeah, so, uh, who, Jesus, you know, he's maybe not as small, uh, maybe not as smart as Charles Hall. Uh, I, honestly, I've never heard of Charles Hall. But Jesus said, Whosoever liveth and believeth me shall never die. I don't know if you ever read that. But. Huh? Right, Charles Hall said what? This grip on mankind. Charles Hall said that death is no longer a prison. Death is no longer a prison. Wow, that's amazing. Well, you know what's amazing to me is what the Lord Jesus Christ said. Okay, who cares? Let's go. Because of the resurrection, it's now an entrance into the presence of God. What a wonderful thing. Well, the book of Revelation talks about two resurrections. No, it don't. The resurrection of the righteous, right when Jesus comes, when he cracks the sky. All right, let's hold on to your seats now. This guy's going to get goofy. I mean, you think that shirt he's wearing goofy? You think that shirt he's wearing is goofy? Wait till you hear what he has to say. The, those who are dead in Christ, and that means that our lives have been immersed in the Holy Spirit, in the life of Christ, are going to rise first. And then we... You know, if you smile like that all the time, does that mean you're right? Or does that mean you're insane? We who are alive will be caught up. The Lord himself will be sent from heaven with the cry of the command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now the second resurrection is at the end of the millennial period, the thousand year reign of Christ. Alright, okay, so this is insane. I'm going to play this again, but I just got to tell you, there is no thousand year reign of Christ. Jesus reigns forever. The archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now the second resurrection is at the end of the millennial period, the thousand year. Alright, so let's just utterly destroy that idea. He's saying that the dead in Christ are going to be resurrected. And then there's going to be a thousand years. And then those of us which are alive will be resurrected. Just from a logical standpoint, that's stupid. So you're saying that Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and <laughs> only the dead in Christ are going to rise. If you're living, if Jesus comes right now, you're still stuck in this hell hole for a thousand years. Yeah, think about that. How stupid is that? So, let's here, let me make this real easy. Let's go to First Thessalonians. No, let's go to Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll open both of these. How about that? First Corinthians 15. Now, I'll also go in here. Right, let's go to Matthew 24. I and mean, who explains the end of the world better than the Lord Jesus Christ himself? Huh? And he says, at the end of the world, the angels gather together his elect. He makes no mention at all. Well, if you're still alive, sorry, you can't come. you got to stay here for a thousand years. F in years. He doesn't say that at all. Well, maybe Jesus didn't know. Jesus should have talked to this guy first before he made such a ridiculous statement because Jesus is wrong and the Hawaii shirt guy is right. Uh, really? 
Where are you getting? Only the dead in Christ are going to rise. Where you get? Where do you get that at? It's not there. And this guy, this is just a lie, a bold-faced lie. And he's making Jesus Christ out to be a liar, especially when you consider the parable of the wheat and the tares. Jesus talks about the harvest. Well, the harvest takes a thousand years. What? Ask any farmer. That's not how it works. That's not how it works at all. When it's harvest time, that's the end of the world. And what happens? The tares, which is the false wheat, is gathered, put in bundles, and burned, while the wheat is gathered into the barn stored into the barn it's preserved it's saved the tares are the unsaved the wheat are those of us which are saved so let's go back he says only the dead in Christ where are we at okay he says only the dead are gonna resurrect all right so you think about this. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Wait a second. He just said, only those that are dead will rise. And here Paul says, we shall not all sleep. So, Paul lied. Hawaii shirt guy, he's, he's the one with the real knowledge. I mean, this guy here. He's just calling Jesus a liar, and he's calling Paul a liar. He's essentially making himself out to be God Almighty. And he's calling these guys liars and pretending to present the truth. It, am I misreading this? Is he not calling? If, if what he says is completely contrary to what Jesus says and what Paul says then yeah, he's making them guys out to be liars is he not yeah, correct me if I'm wrong on that and you know I'm not sorry but I'm just gonna have to take the words of Jesus and the words of Paul over what this guy says alright and if that guy got upset with me about it then good get mad because you're wrong seriously seriously wrong we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed I and mean, this happens at the same moment in time in a moment in the twinkling of night the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal put on immortality are you out of your cotton pick in mind what are you talking about man the dead are going to be raised up and then a thousand years we got to wait a thousand years you might as well die right now isn't that really what you're saying you better go kill yourself today because if Jesus comes and you're still alive you have to suffer this God-forsaken world for a thousand years. So kill yourself today. Isn't that really what he's implying? Hey, who the hell wants to live in this hell hole for another thousand years? Sorry, buddy. you got to wait a thousand years. You're still living. That's not... I mean, that's insanity. Isn't that what he's saying, though? Isn't that what he's implying when he says, If you're alive and Jesus comes, you don't get to go. Isn't that what he's saying? You're better off to kill yourself. Don't even watch the rest of my video here. Just kill yourself right now because if Jesus comes, you don't. Yeah, you know, why? Why would you take the chance, man? Why would you risk it if what he says is true? This is insanity, man. Wow. <laughs> and seriously, how can you look at this any other way? 
doesn't anybody put any thought into anything at all of what's being said by them or another person or what's you know come on man there's nothing at all <laughs> alright let's continue with his line of thinking okay so Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven only the dead are raised are, are raised those of us which are alive we gotta suffer and when the dead in Christ are are taken away and those those of us that are still alive are left behind left behind is that what you watched a Hollywood movie and you thought it was the gospel of God didn't you is that what's going on here you watched a Hollywood movie and you took the Hollywood movie over what the Word of God says isn't that what's going on here all right so um, we're the, those those of us that are alive I mean, that doesn't even make sense though with your Hollywood movies you didn't you watch the whole thing you fall asleep in the middle of it I haven't seen it so what am I talking about in the Hollywood movie the the living are taken right I'm, I mean I've seen the preview uh, they're all sitting around on a plane and then all of a sudden one of them wakes up and looks around nobody's on the plane all right all right and so the assumption is that everybody else was saved and they and god took them and meanwhile you're in a plane all by yourself or whatever I, you know um so the i mean the idea is so ridiculous all right so you're still alive and all the dead in christ are taken away and then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Wait a second. Why am I still here if I'm saved? And death is swallowed up in victory. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. First um, Thessalonians 4. Um, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead and Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air so shall we ever be with the Lord so we're gonna be caught up first the dead in Christ then we are gonna follow them we're gonna see the dead in Christ rise up if we rose up first, we really wouldn't see the dead in Christ rise. We are um, blessed to have that moment when we are on earth and we are seeing our loved ones being taken up into the air to meet the Lord and then we follow after them. All right, you remember, where was that at? Every man in, in his own order. Uh, you remember remember that verse here let's see if I can find it yeah no oh, it, it, it was right there it was up here that's where it was every man in his own order so I don't know I'm only gonna speculate here for a second so we know Jesus Christ is the first resurrection he is the first one to rise up and ascend to heaven all right first one now every man in his own order <clears throat> <coughs> excuse me all right so and I'm just guessing here I'm just speculating I should say is that well, what if it is that like say Adam uh, is the first one that rises up and then every person like Noah you know he'll rise and then Abraham rises up and um, and on it and on you know Moses and so on and so forth A everybody in sort of well the oldest to the youngest in a sense right so the oldest get they get to go first and then the last to go would be those of us that are alive perhaps even oldest to youngest I don't know um, or maybe the opposite maybe youngest to oldest of those of us that are alive I mean who knows 
it's just it's it, to me it's kind of interesting to think about I'd rather think about stuff like that you know on the day that the Lord Jesus Christ comes and all of us that are going to be saved and we're going to be changed in the moment and the twinkling of an eye you know I like to think about stuff like that I, I'd rather not think about you know professors having sex with dogs I don't care about that stuff I'd rather think about the good stuff not the bad stuff but I get it it's a necessity we gotta be sharp we gotta be aware of the evils around us I get it but I'm not gonna obsess over the evils that surround us constantly all the time day after day minute after minute okay alright so let's go we gotta we gotta go to Revelation 20 All right. and again let me sort of just make this real simple uh, we are kings and priests of God we are the ones that sit on thrones we are a royal priesthood we're royalty right now we are kings and priests of God we sit on thrones and the judgment of God has already been made it's already been we've we're sealed that judgment has been made and it, the judge has put a seal upon it and nothing can change that we are saved sealed secured sanctified forever that can never change God put a seal on it and that's it alright that is it nothing you can ever do or nothing anybody else can ever do can ever change what God has sealed when it comes to everlasting life so God has sealed us that are born of the Spirit of God and that can never change all right so this stuff right here is the stuff that is going on but then this is this is one side of the coin I or how do I say this this is um, one thing yeah here let me do it this way um, so the souls of them that were beheaded for a witness and for the Word of God these are things that are going on during this thousand year period and people worshiping the beast and his image and receiving the mark is on the other side of the you know, if you flip the coin that's what's going on with the unsaved people during this thousand year period alright there's really you're looking way too hard at this if you don't see it and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years alright so it, really goes without saying doesn't it if somebody's beheaded they're not alive anymore all right so during this thousand year period uh, people are living and reigning with Christ during this time right now how can you rightly say that you're saved if you're not reigning with Christ right now it you're not saved if Jesus Christ is not reigning in your life right now, you're not saved. Because when you are saved, when you're born of the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God is in you, and you are in the Spirit of God. Jesus Christ abides in you, and you in Him, and nothing can ever change that. And you're going to sit there and say, well, I don't reign with Christ. That's just like saying, I'm not saved. I'm, I'm a child of the devil. I'm an antichrist. I mean, come on. The rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Jesus Christ is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part. See, those of us that are born of the Spirit of God, we are partakers of his resurrection. Right? Every man in his own order. First, Jesus Christ. He is the first fruits of them that slept. All right. It's not complicated, man. This is not rocket science. We're not trying to fly a spaceship to the moon. Man, this is easy, simple stuff. Right now, 
we are partakers of his resurrection. Remember Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Here, let me confirm that because I, I don't want you to think I'm making this stuff. I don't want you thinking I'm making this stuff up. Let me see if I can find something that might say, there it is. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Jesus is the resurrection. You're not the resurrection. You think you're the first resurrection? No, Jesus is the first resurrection. And you got to be out of your cotton pick in mind. You're not going to be resurrected before Jesus. Jesus is already resurrected and ascended to heaven, promised to return for us. We are partakers of his resurrection. There's no way to get around this. All you have to do, man, seriously, think about what you're teaching. Think about what you believe. Think it all the way out. Don't ignore it. Don't hide it from it. Be honest with yourself. Right now, those of us that are born of the Spirit of God, right now, the second death has no power over us right now. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. The second death has no power over us right now. We are sealed, secured, sanctified forever. Saved, sealed, secured, sanctified forever and ever and ever and ever. The judgment of God has been given to us, and that is eternal life. Nothing can ever change that. And that judgment, it has right now. It's not It's not going to be when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we all stand before God, and God's going to take a look at us and say, What? You're saved. No, you're saved right now. You're saved forever the moment you are born of the Spirit of God. The judgment that happens at the end of the world is going to be those that are not saved those of us that are saved that those of us that the judgment has already been given to we are transformed into our glorified bodies because the judgment has already been given to us so Jesus comes he calls us up to meet him in the air and while we rise, we are changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, we are changed, transformed into our glorified bodies. Now the judgment of God is upon all the unsaved, and all the unsaved are gathered at our feet. And this goes back all the way to Genesis 3, verse 15. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. So we're up in the air. Our enemies, which are the unsaved, are gathered at our feet. Fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. This is consistent all throughout the Bible. And it's simple. It's easy. It's not complicated. We're not trying to fly... We're not trying to fly the book up to the moon, you know. We're not trying to build a spaceship and, and fly to Mars, you know. It's not complicated. It's simple. Second Corinthians 11, verse 3, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through a subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. This stuff is simple, man. This stuff is simple. We got the parable of the wheat and the tares. We got numerous examples. Time and time again. But what's going to happen at the end of the world? 
and it's very simple it's very very simple when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world and it is when we are changed forever and all wickedness is done away with forever all right it's that simple you know you hear about all these dispensations the Mormons teach it and you see a lot of Christians teaching the same thing that the Mormons teach it's incredible and you gotta wonder sometimes are you are you a Mormon are you because you're teaching the same thing that the Mormons teach. Hey, just admit it. Be honest if that's what you are. You know, tell them. Tell everybody. Hey, I believe that uh, when I die, I'm going to uh, the planet Mars and I'm going to have a whole world, a whole planet of people to have sex with. It's going to be great. If that's what you believe. Just be honest, man. You know, because the Mormons are teaching the same thing about this idea of two resurrections a thousand years of uh, Jesus Christ reigning after he comes in the clouds of heaven essentially there's no end of the world and essentially Jesus Christ is lying and Joseph Smith is right and so you're gonna go along with Joseph Smith because he's promised us a planet of virgin women that we can have our you know, we just have sex with all of them. They're all ours, right? You're the Jesus Christ of your own planet. I and mean, how wonderful is that? That's what they teach. Seems like you're teaching the same thing. That's what it looks like to me. You're calling Jesus Christ a liar, and then you're teaching the doctrines of the Mormon religion. All right, so I get fired up about this stuff, man. And I don't think it should be taken lightly. Now, I, I appreciate all these comments, man. If you disagree, if I'm too hard, anything at all, let me know and talk about it. I want to be better, and I just want the truth. And I want the same for you. All right? Yeah. Sometimes I, I get too hard. Sometimes I'm too nasty. Okay, that's all right. I'll try to do better. I can give you my word on that. I'll try to do better. I'm not perfect. I know you're not perfect either. And so for sure I got to be more gracious, more merciful toward others. I get it. Being hard on this guy cuz he's got a goofy shirt. His his goofy shirt's better than any shirt that I got. But it's still goofy, okay? And um you know, um what really burns me <laughs> I and mean, I can't get around this, man. I can't accept this idea that Jesus lied to me. That I'm not going to go along with that, guys. I cannot go along with that. So Jesus lied, and I got to trust what this guy says. No, I cannot go along with that. When it is the harvest, it is the end of the world. And the harvest is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and the reapers are the angels. And they will gather us together, first the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. And then our enemies gathered at our feet and destroyed forever. And death is swallowed up in victory. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. So we're up in the air. Our enemies gathered at our feet. Fire comes down from heaven, from God, out of heaven, and devours them all. And then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave. Where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ.
Christ. Amen.